S is for Silver, a Nevada Alphabet. Written by Eleanor Kaur, illustrated by Darcy Park. S is for Silver, a Nevada Alphabet. Written by Eleanor Kaur, illustrated by Darcy Park. A. Our official state animal, the desert bighorn sheep, can be found living in southern Nevada. Nevada's mountainous desert country is a good environment for the animal because it can survive without water for long periods. A male bighorn is about four and one half feet tall and can weigh as much as 175 pounds. There are two other kinds of bighorn sheep living in Nevada, California bighorn sheep in northwest Nevada and Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep in northeast Nevada. In total, there are nearly 1,500 of these proud animals left in our state more than any other place in the world. Animal is the word that begins with A, and one that's amazing in every way. An awesome animal that is just so great, the bighorn sheep, animal of our state. B is for mountain bluebird, our state animal we love to see, feeding their young, keeping them neat, and singing for us, oh so sweet. In April of 1967, the mountain bluebird was named Nevada's state bird. In calm skies, it can travel very fast, 20 to 30 miles per hour. This bird is bra a brave survivor in our harsh desert climate. A member of the thrush family, our bluebird song is a clear, short warble. The bright blue-colored male doesn't have to sing for long to attract his more plain-colored mate. Female bluebirds are brownish-gray with a white belly and undertail and a bit of blue on their tail. The female bluebird builds a cup-shaped nest using dry grass stems, plants, and thin strips of bark. It may take from two days to more than a week to finish building the nest. Once the nest is built, the female lays one egg each day until the clutch, usually with five or six eggs, is complete. Mountain bluebirds eat seeds, berries, fruit, and insects. Carson City, that's our sea, where our capital makes its home. Here laws are made with fair and right under the silvery shining dome. Carson City was the crossroads for miners and pioneers, and soon it became the fine location for a thriving trading post. The name is taken from the Carson River, which is named after the famous scout Kit Carson. Explorer John Fremont and Carson together drew the first map of Nevada. When the Nevada Territory was established in 1861, Carson City was named this t as the territorial capital. After Nevada was granted statehood in 1864 by Congress, Carson City became our state capital. A small spruce tree was planted in the town square. In 1937, when the tree had grown to 95 feet tall, it was adorned with its first holiday lights. Now, 750 bulbs send out a glow every holiday season. Carson City's oldest tree is over 200 years old, and in 1976, it was named the Nevada Bicentennial Tree. This cottonwood tree is 8 feet thick. De dedicate the letter D to a woman called Datsola Lee. Decorative baskets she would weave, so a history of her people she could leave. Dot Sola Lee was the last of the great Washoe artists who knew the ancient art of weaving their tribal history and stories into baskets. As a child, she gathered reeds and willow stems and then dyed them using tree bark and roots, later weaving them into fine baskets. She, be she is best known for her De Gikup baskets. These, ba these baskets begin with smaller base, extending into a larger circle, then becoming smaller until the opening at the top is the same size as the base. She was born around 1850 in the Carson Valley and lived to be nearly 96 years old. In her later years, when she, her eyesight was not as sharp as it once was, she had become so talented at weaving the intricate designs that she no longer needed to see well to create these baskets. When we hear Eureka bringing us to E, after digging in the rocky ground, it was gold they came to see. Eureka could be heard during the 1800s mining boom as many people discovered gold and silver in Nevada. Some believed elf-like creatures called Tommyknockers made tapping sounds when there was gold. 
When there was no more tapping, the mines became bare, and the families left ranch lands and cities. A town named Eureka is located in the northern part of Nevada, also called Miner Country. Gold is still mined in Nevada, and the state leads the United States in the production of gold. It is the third highest gold producer in the world behind Australia and South Africa. The word Eureka means I found it and was first uttered in Greek inventor Archimedes in about 225 BC when he found a way to measure the purity of gold. F is for our flag of flying with Nevada's glistening gold and shining stars of silver to honor treasures we still hold. The official colors of Nevada are blue and silver, and these are both represented on our state flag. The background of the flag is blue, in the upper left-hand corner is a five-pointed star surrounded by sagebrush. Since the state was admitted to the Union during the Civil War, Battleborn is printed across the top and is a fitting slogan. Nevada was the only state to enter the Union during the Civil War years. Above the state name is a silver star representing silver. Our state mineral, Nevada, a Spanish word for snow-clad, is also printed on the flag as a reminder of the towering peaks of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. The flag's design was changed a few times before it was presence design was adopted in 1991. G becomes our great seal, our great state seal, making it look quite grand. Ranch land, lakes, and mountains tall, this seal sure tells it all. Our first great seal was approved by the leaders of the Territory of Nevada on November 29, 1861. At the time, the motto of the territory was able and willing, and it appeared on the seal. In 1866, the state adopted a motto, all for our country, which is sewn on today's seal. The 36 stars on the inner ring of the seal tell us that Nevada was the 36th state admitted to the Union in 1864. Everything on the seal has important meaning related to the many interesting facts about Nevada. There is a silver miner and his team moving a carload of ore from a mountain and a quartz mill as shown. There is a train moving across the background lined with telegraph poles. This represents the transportation and communication in Nevada. Agriculture is our, in our state is shown by a sheaf of wheat and a sickle and plow. A bright sun rising over a snow-capped mountain peak symbolizes Nevada's natural beauty. H is for Hoover Dam, steel strong in might, gives us water and power every day and night. Construction of Hoover Dam began in 1930 and was completed in 1935. It was built using enough concrete to construct a two-lane highway from San Francisco to New York. Hoover Dam spans a canyon of the Colorado River. It is part of a system which provides water to more than 18 million people in the southwest United States and has 17 generators giving it the capacity to produce large amounts of electricity. Lake Mead was created by Hoover Dam and is the largest man-made lake in the country. It has become a popular spot for water sports and fishing in Nevada. The lake also provides water for fruit, vegetables, and foods for animals. Nevada produces crops such as alfalfa, hay, barley, wheat, oats, and potatoes. Hard hats, worn today for safety on construction sites, were invented to protect the workers who built Hoover Dam. Introducing letter I, an ichthyosaurus that lived during the time of dinosaurs. These interesting reptiles' remains were found on mountains considered sacred ground. The name ichthyosaur comes from the Greek word ichthys, which means fish reptile, but they were not fish at all. They were reptiles. Ichthyosaurs bore their young alive and were air-breathing. They lived about the same time as dinosaurs. Dr. Charles Camp discovered the fossilized remains of our ichthyosaurs in 1928, and the prehistoric reptile was declared our state fossil in 1977. Nevada is the only state that has a complete 55-foot-long skeleton of the ichthyosaur. The Shoshones have declared the mountain where the ichthyosaurs were found to be a sacred site. The name of Nevada's ichthyosaur was changed to Shawneesaurus, which means reptile of the Shoshone Mountains. Wild horses couldn't keep us away from Velma Johnson and Letter J, a woman who worked courageously so that the horses could run free. Velma Johnson earned the nickname Wild Horse Annie because her work to save the wild horses. 
Born in Nevada, this noble woman saved the wild horses and burros from extinction. She showed that one person can make a difference. When Annie learned how cruel the wild horses' roundups could be, she took action in making speeches and asking children across the land to write letters to Congress and Senate for their help in saving wild horses. Finally, people listened. On December 15, 1971, Congress passed the Wild Free Roaming Horse and Burrow Act to save animals on public lands forever. Today, about 48,000 wild horses run free. Have you ever lost your way like Nancy Kelsey or Letter K? Her wagon train got off course and she had to deal with nature's force. In 1841, Nancy Kelsey was part of the Bidwell Bartleson wagon train. The leaders were unprepared and had no compass, directions, or maps. As they traveled over rough terrain, they had to give up their wagons and supplies, including extra food and clothing. Even though she was expecting her second child, Nancy carried her young daughter much of the way. In spite of her difficulties, Nancy was the first non-Indian woman to reach California by traveling overland from the east, and she did it by going through Nevada. Her group knew the Humboldt River existed, and though they could follow it to the Pacific, but the, what they didn't know was that the largest river in Nevada doesn't reach the ocean, but simply disappears into the ground in a spot called the Humboldt Sink. L is for Las Vegas, always fun, circus, zoo, and lots of shows, and standing 75 feet tall, Vegas Vic welcomes all. Las Vegas is Spanish for the meadows, but some like to call it the most exciting city in the whole world. One three-mile street holds ho of hotels is often called the Strip, and these enormous hotels have special decorations and entertainment. The largest hotel in Las Vegas is the MGM Grand, with over 5,000 rooms. There are hotels with the themes such as make-believe Egyptian period and the Eiffel Tower. Visitors can also watch pirate ships battle or jump aboard the Double Loop roller coaster or take in a magic show. In downtown Las Vegas, we can visit museums, sample chocolates in a candy factory, ride ponies in a park, or go up in a balloon to see it all from the sky. The Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce unveiled Vegas Vic in 1947, a giant neon-trimmed cowboy hat-wearing figure on Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Vegas Vic was built to create attention for Las Vegas and the casinos. He now has a tall companion, Vegas Vicky, glittering nearby. Betty Momund, that's our M. It was filled with fossils galore. Many came to dig for them, so there are many, there may not be many more. It all happened in 1960 when geologists who were mapping around the area saw the amazing 270 foot thick and 1,000 foot long mound of pale gray limestone. They were excited because it proved to be the largest, best preserved of the three mud mounds in Nevada. It is named after the nearby town of Betty, and the mound is about 115 miles north of Las Vegas. The Betty Mud Mound is famous because it contains the most complete fossil record of any 15 million year old deposit in the world. Many fossils at the Betty, are, at the Betty site are buried around 480 million years ago. For amateur collectors and professional, the mound is a special treat, but in the near future it is likely that the government will make the extraordinary mud mound off-limits to all but scientists. Have you ever been to National Park and our letter N? Lakes, streams, and forests too, it'll make quite an impression on you. Great Basin National Park in eastern Nevada was established in 1986 and is a splendid tribute to the Great Basin region. From its sagebrush near the base of the mountain peaks to the park provides a perfect spot to learn much about Nevada. Within the National Park is Lemon Caves. There is just one cave, though, and its name may fool you. It is a beautiful cave that goes a quarter mile into marble and limestone with seemingly unlimited and unusual formations. The cave is also used to study climate changes and their effects on plants and animals. Wheeler Peak is located in the center of the Great Basin, and it's the state's second highest peak. At over 13,063 feet, this mountain has a permanent ice cap and an interesting glacial formation. Boundary Peak, part of the Sierra Nevada range in the western part of the state, is the highest peak in Nevada. 
Famous for their size and shape, our precious gemstone is our O. Black opal, it's what we all know, many, many want them so. On May 27, 1987, Nevada adopted the black opal as our state precious gemstone. The Virgin Valley is the only place in North America where such spectacular opals are found in significant quantities. Native Americans believe that if they gazed deeply into the fiery soul of the stone, they would have good luck. Where do these precious stones come from? They are found in layers of clay formed when volcanic ash filled ancient lakes millions of years ago. Opals are fossilized bits and pieces of plants that have become opalized. It takes nearly 10 million years to form a fiery reddish black opal. P. It took millions of years to form Pyramid Lake. It is the remains of Lake Lahontan, an inland sea that covered 8,000 square miles about 11 million years ago. It is the only lake in the world that is home to the unique Kui Kui fish as well as the cutthroat trout, and it is the largest natural lake completely within Nevada. Anaho Island, located in Pyramid Lake, is one of the only American white pelican nesting sites in North America. Pyramid Lake is about 30 miles northeast of Sparks. Also a natural lake, Lake Tahoe, with its 72 mil miles of shoreline, lies partly in Nevada and partly in California. At a 6,223-foot altitude, it is North America's largest mountain lake and the third deepest freshwater lake in the United States. During the winter months, visitors to Lake Tahoe can ski at Heavenly Ski Resorts and enjoy the slopes in two states. Lake Tahoe Nevada State Park offers sandy beaches, bo boat launches, picnicking, bike trails, and many more warm weather activities. Other natural lakes in Nevada are Washoe, Paragamut, Walker, and Ruby. Presenting Pyramid Lake for letter P. It's what remains of an inland sea, and in its center, what a shock, a 500-foot pyramid of rock. Q. A quantity of quarters. There are quite a lot when you get very lucky and hit a big jackpot. Eva Adams, born in Wonder, Nevada, was named director of the United States Mint in 1961. President John F. Kennedy wanted someone who understood precious metals and the state that produced them to serve as the Mint's director. The United States once had a mint in Carson City that ran from 1870 to 1893 because Nevada was mining so much gold and silver. When the United States Mint was making the country's first coins, it said that Martha Washington helped out by donating her best silver spoons. While Ava was in office, the government began making quarters in three layers. The core is copper, and the other two layers are nickel alloys. Some say that the quarters became the most popular coin, and that the modern slot machine was perfected in the 1890s. It takes about 39 armored trucks to night, two nights to deliver millions of quarters and only one of the many casinos in Las Vegas. R stands for our reptile. The desert tortoise is very wise, hiding away from heat and cold so that it may live to be 70 years old. These reptiles have been around for at least 1 million years and have lived in the southwestern United States for the last 10,000 to 12,000 years. Desert tortoises are easy to recognize by their thick elephant-like legs. Their front legs are larger than the rear so that they can dig deep burrows to escape the sizzling heat and the freezing cold. Vegetarians, they eat only grasses, blossoms, and cactuses. These tortoises grow very slowly and breeding happens when they are 15 to 20 years old. Females lay 4 to 6 eggs from early May to July. In 90 to 120 days, their white oblong eggs will hatch into 2 inch long babies. Near Las Vegas, there is a protected area for the desert tortoise where you can study this, the largest Mojave desert reptile. Letter S is here to show our state flower is able to grow. Whether other plants may not survive, scented sagebrush can still thrive. Sagebrush, our silvery gray state flower, has yellow blossoms and covers 40% of Nevada. Even with little rain, this hardy bush keeps on growing, spreading and blooming. Sagebrush grows everywhere in the Great Basin. One nickname for Nevada is the Sagebrush State. 
Native Americans used sagebrush as dye, fuel, medicine, and other parts of religious ceremonies. Some like to burn sagebrush in their fireplaces because it smells like spicy apple cider. When it rains, wet sagebrush has a distinctive smell. Nevada campers can enjoy sitting around a campfire smelling the spicy apple cider scent of sagebrush and singing Nevada State Song, written by Bertha Raffetto. Home means Nevada. T. An evergreen, the single-leaf pinion keeps its short, stiff needles all year and is found growing on rocky slopes and hills. It was chosen as Nevada's state tree in 1953. The second state tree, the bristlecone pine, was chosen by Eli school children in 1987 when they discovered that some were older than California, sequoias, and living in our own state. A man named Dr. Shulman studied the bristlecone pines in the mid-1950s and thought the oldest was about 4,000 years old. But then a geology student saw a tree that appeared to be even older, and he bored a hole in the trunk, pulling out a core that clearly showed 4,900 rings. Unfortunately, the bore broke, and the foolish young student cut the tree down to release the boring machine. He sawed off a slice of the trunk, showing the 4,900 rings, and gave it to a restaurant to put on display. And there it is, what was the oldest tree in the whole world. Some bristlecone pines are now protected in our Great Basin National Park. T stands for our two state trees. Single leaf pinion is famous for nuts, but bristlecone pine has it beat, living so long through drought and heat. In Las Vegas or Reno, university starts with you. Where would you go? There is so much you can do. In 1874, the State University opened as a preparatory school in Elko. At this time, Elko was a small railroad town just four years old. There was only money for one professor and seven students attended. In 1885, the school in Elko was moved to Reno near the state's busiest mining district, the Comstock Load, and the state capital in Carson City, where it became a full-fledged university. The McKay School of Mines, renowned for its training of mining engineers, is on the Reno campus of the University of Nevada. John Mackey the made his fortune during the Comstock mining boom, and his family has made many donations to the school. An extension of the University of Nevada at Reno first held classes in southern Nevada in an extra classroom at Las Vegas High School in 1951. At the time, there was only one professor and 12 students. A few years later, the extension was named Nevada Southern, and in 1969, it became an independent school, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV. It's named Virginia City. Let's have this become our V. Digging through the rocky ground, success at last when silver and gold are found. One of the richest silver strikes in the history found near Virginia City was discovered by two Irish miners in 1859, but was actually named after Henry Page Comstock. Some believe Henry did so much bragging about the load that it was eventually called the Comstock Load, known as the largest silver deposit in North America. Square set timbering was invented by Philip Dietischheimer in Orff Mine in Virginia City. He never sought a patent for his invention. Rather, to increase safety in the mines, he let anyone use his method. Dietischheimer's invention enabled the deep mines in the area to produce many millions of bullion. Soon, hundreds of miners brought their families and settled in Virginia City. Additional discoveries of silver and gold brought more people, making it one of the largest cities in the West at the time, except for San Francisco. The mines provided silver that helped the Union win the Civil War. With W, a wonderful letter, we honor someone who wanted a better life. Chief Winnemucca wished that wars would cease so that people could live in peace. Winnemucca was chief of an Indian nation called the Paiutes. He taught his people to love peace, be kind to one another, and to respect women. It is believed that one night he dreamt that strangers with white faces would come to be his brothers. When traders visited his camp, Winnemucca shouted, Welcome! You are the white brothers of my dream! 
He ordered his braves to greet the visitors by riding on ponies decorated with cedar twigs and bright flowers. He helped them find the best camping places and where to hunt for valuable skins of beavers and foxes. When explorer John Fremont arrived, he met Chief Winnemucca's father and liked him so much that he gave him the name Captain Truckee, which means all right. Until he died in 1882, Truckee helped Fremont and many other settlers. An extraordinary princess was so great, she established a school to educate. X marks the spot where her tribe would go to learn the things they needed to know. Sarah Winnemucca was born in 1844, the daughter of Chief Winnemucca. Her Paiute name, Thokmiktani, means shellflower. She spent her life trying to prove living conditions of her tribe. Sarah established the first school for Paiutes near Lovelock, and her statue stands near the Sacagawea in Washington Statutory Hall. She was not afraid to speak to the government officials in Washington, even President Rutherford B. Hayes asking for a fair treatment of her tribe. Life Among the Paiutes was written by Sarah, and it is described as a powerful legacy to her Native American culture and to the European settlers' culture. It was the first book ever published that was written by Native American woman. Her grandfather was Captain Truckee, who helped many newcomers in Nevada. Y stands for the perfect place, to enjoy life at a slower pace. You'll relax and have some fun in the town of Urington. Founded in 1878, Urington was about 3,000 citizens who have time to leisurely sit with friends and visitors who soon adopt their gentle pace. Many of the families living in this agricultural community have been there for generations. Chances are, in a town that is one square mile in size without a spotlight, stoplight, you are now likely to pass by many folks you know. A famous writer, Mark Twain, or Samuel Clemens, spent several years in Nevada. He wrote Roughing It about his years in Nevada. Do you think he may have written his book different title if, it had be, if he had been able to visit Urington and its residents? Wovoka was a famous Paiute mystic who lived near Urington and spent his life spreading the ghost dance religion among many tribes across the American West. On December 19, 1975, a Wovoka historical marker was placed at the Urington Indian Colony by the Urington Paiute tribe. Z stands for zillions of critters scattered around our state. You can lend a hand for the survival upon our land. Nevada is the driest state, but there are zillions of creatures living in our deserts. What a surprise! We have 4,000 species of plants, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Our plants and animals depend on each other and the environment to survive. Many animals need plants for food, shade, and shelter. Many plants need insects, birds, and animals to spread their seeds and pollinate their flowers. Some animals eat only certain kinds of plants, and picky eaters prefer only special parts of plants. Our state grass, Indian grass, grows throughout the state looking like an untidy bunch of feathers. It is known for its ability to reseed and establish itself in areas damaged by fire or overgrazing. Most Nevadans are careful not to harm any part of this precious state and are proud to help visitors understand and appreciate our deserts, lakes, mountains, and rivers, and all our critters no matter how small.